This tutorial builds on the concepts shown in the dashboard's intro video and shows you how to create filters, hyperlinks, and pass parameter values. To get things moving along, I'll start with a dashboard that already contains dashlets. It contains text and image dashlets across the top, reports created with Jaspersoft Studio, and a few chart dashlets. Dashlets can be defined with hyperlink properties. When I enable the hyperlinks property, I set an action where I can have the click action either open a new page. This causes a new browser tab to open. Update the page. This causes the current dashboard in the page to be updated with any past parameter values. Or replace the page, causing the dashboard to be replaced with a different page. When I set the action to open a new page or replace the current page, then I must provide a location of that page, which can be a web page address or another dashboard, ad hoc view, or report from the Jasper report server. Here I'll select another dashboard. I can then test the hyperlink by going into display mode, where you can see that clicking on the dashlet causes a new page to open. I'll go back to design mode and add a new image dashlet. An image dashlet can display an image from a web page or from a file that's stored in the Jasper report server. I'll save my work and show you how to load an image onto the server. I select the view repository option to see a list of folders. I right click on the folder and select the add resource item, then select file and image, where I can select an image from my local file system. In the dashboard designer, I add an image dashlet and then select my image. I then format and resize my dashlet. Next, I add a hyperlink action. In this case, I want to replace the current page with a new dashboard. One key feature of the hyperlink action is the ability to pass parameters into a dashboard when it opens. The top performance dashboard contains a product family filter. When opening the dashboard, I can pass in a value by using the question mark symbol with the parameter name and value to be passed into the hyperlink dashboard. I'll then save my work and then test the hyperlink by going into display mode, where you see that clicking on the image dashlet causes the page to be replaced and the content to be filtered by food products. You'll also notice a back button in the dashboard. The replace hyperlink action causes the back button to appear. Selecting the back button takes the user back to the original dashboard. Now let's go back to designer mode, where I also want to add a text field that will show the current date and time. I'll drag a new text dashlet onto the canvas and show you how dynamic parameters can be set. Parameters are defined with the dollar sign notation. When I type a dollar sign into the text field, I see a hot menu appear. Any parameter declared in the dashboard can be used in text strings with $p. We don't have any of those defined yet, so I'm going to skip that for now. When I select the dollar date item, I see a list of date string keywords. I'll select one of these and then also add a time parameter keyword. Then you will see in display mode that the current date and time are displayed. Now, let's take a look at filters. You notice a section in the content panel for filters. This shows filters available from all dashlets. You can create a filter panel in the dashboard based on any of the filters across all dashlets. I'll drag the country and customer agenda filters onto the canvas. If you prefer to have filters shown as a pop-up, then go to the dashboard level properties and select the show filter dashlet as a pop-up option. You then see a filter icon appear in the toolbar. I'll then go into display mode to see how changing filter values affects their associated dashlets. You may have noticed that the demographic mix dashlet has a store country filter, which is different than the country filter from the store type metrics dashlet. By default, selecting a country value from the dashboard level filter does not pass parameters into the store country filter because they are sourced from different filter controls. Note that a mouse over on each filter label 
shows the path of the filter's location on the server. Filters that are defined as part of a visualization defined in the dashboard will always show with a TMP in the path. The last section of the string shows the actual filter name. This is the parameter name associated with each filter. I'll tell you more about this later. You may also see certain filters with an empty filter icon and italicized name. These are hidden filters that are part of a report definition. Hidden filters cannot be placed into the filter panel, but the values may be set by the dashboard. I can map the store country filter to the country filter with the parameter mapping dialog. This dialog shows all parameters that are in the dashboard and lets you map each to different parameters as needed. In our example, we had a mapping to the demographic mixed dashlet and selected store country parameter. Notice that when you mouse over the label names that you will also see its associated parameter name. This parameter name is available for use in text dashlets, dashlet title bar strings, and used in hyperlink actions. For example, I want to show the name of the selected country in the demographic mix dashlet's title bar. I open the dashlet's properties and enter $p and the store country's parameter name which is store underscore country underscore one in curly braces. You then see in display mode that selecting a country in the filter causes the title bar to show the selected value, like Mexico. I can add hyperlink actions to charts and ad hoc views or visualizations created directly in a dashboard via a dashlet's hyperlink property. Let's take a look at the store type metrics dashboard. The hyperlink tab will show you a list of all parameters that are available for the dashlet. These parameters are based on the fields that are placed into rows and columns of the visualization's layout. When the user clicks on a data point in the visualization, each of these parameters are set to the values from the selected data cell. For example, if the user clicks on a bubble representing sales for USA supermarkets, the parameter value for measures is dynamically set to sales the parameter value for country is set to USA, and the store type is set to supermarket. If you need to map the selected value to another parameter, select the parameter mapping dialog. For example, I set the hyperlink action to update page, and I set the selected country value to the demographic mixed dashlet. I go to the display mode to test my bubble hyperlink. You can see how the click action causes the demographic mix chart and title bar to update. One last thing I'd like to show is the ability to hyperlink from a chart to another page. I'll do this with the demographic mix chart. The KPI dashboard has its own parameters, and I want to pass values selected from the current dashboard. To dynamically pass values, I add a question mark to the page address with the parameter name and value to be updated. I can pass multiple values by adding the ampersand sign and then another parameter string reference. When I test this in display mode, notice how the dashboard shows data for the selected state and product category. Once I've finished designing my dashboard, I can run it from the main page to see how it will work when other users view it. One last thing I'd like to point out. This dashboard contains a Jaspersoft Studio-based report that also has hyperlinks. The hyperlink action is defined as part of the report properties as defined in Jaspersoft Studio. This concludes the advanced dashboard tutorial. If you're interested in embedding a dashboard into your own web pages, Check out the Jaspersoft Visualize.js material on TIPCO's GitHub.